I'm super stoked, I'm excited, because I've got the full leak specifications for Olympus's new camera, the one that's going to be debuting on February the 15th, which is Tuesday, not too long away. And the name of this camera is not the WOW camera, it's going to be called OM-1. Now you might think it's the WOW camera, let me know in the comments section down below by the time you finish watching this video if you think this camera wows you. What about this camera excites you? Now again, I'm reading the specifications from essentially what is the back end of a manual. This doesn't tell us the full story. And I'd really like to see their presentation on Tuesday and the reviews, because this is just first-hand information we're getting from the back of a manual, essentially. Now, I did do some research before I recorded this video because I saw the specifications on many different sites. And thanks to Ember Sky Media for pointing it out to me, I was watching Death in Paradise getting ready for bed and I realized I'm not going to bed anytime soon. Some of the sites would say, it had a backside illuminated stack sensor, and then two lines above it said, well, it was a backside illuminated sensor, but it's not stacked. It's 20 megapixels. It's not. It's 24 megapixels. So I've done a lot of previewing. Let me turn off my watch here. I did a lot of research to try to find out the source behind all this, to find out what is accurate as far as the sensor goes. It, ha it is a micro four-thirds sensor, so it's got that four to three aspect ratio. It is a backside illuminated stack sensor. So that's really, really exciting. Now, I'm going to talk about stills capabilities first. This camera is going to be able to shoot up to 120 frames per second, depending on what mode you're in. This is very similar to what the Nikon Z9 can do. It can shoot 120 frames per second or 119 frames per second if you're at 11 megapixels. But if you want to shoot full bore, Nikon RAW, lossless, burst, 20 frames per second, well, then you can do that at 45.7 megapixels and you're going to push out about 1.2 gigabytes worth of data. So up to 120 frames per second stills. It has IBIS, which functions in both video and stills. Exposure compensation, plus or minus 5. And what did I miss? Oh yes, ISO. Now the ISO, it depends on, depends on what mode you're in, but essentially it goes from 60 on the low end all the way up to 102,400. So it's looking pretty solid. Now we do get about two extra stops of low light performance here. But again, let's see how this actually translates into the real world. Um, we should get some information on Tuesday once. The people who have it in their hands, those lucky people, I bet DP Review has it. Jordan and um, Chris are out there testing it, I bet. And I'm really curious to see what they come up with uh, in terms of these specifications. Because again, this is the back of the manual. This is not the heart and the soul of what a camera can do. It's the capabilities, but the specs can really sort of lead us in that direction. It can also do focus stacking, but I know what you want to get into now. Let's get into the video specifications. Now, the rumors were pretty good. i got to say that Four Thirds Rumors has done a terrific job of these, and I'd say, like their, uh, what is it, FT4, this is about 80% correct in what they got. We don't have 120 frames per second in 4K. And if you notice the video I put out earlier today, I said that they did change that from a previous day. The camera can shoot 4K video. It can shoot it at 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second. So all the basic frame modes. So if you shoot in 24 or 25, you do get slow motion at 4K up to 60. And I believe it's 10 bit 422. But in full HD, which is 1920 by 1080, we get a little extra. So we get all those basic frame rates, but slow motion, depending on the mode you choose, can go all the way up to 240 frames per second, which is quite impressive. You still get IBIS working for you in video. Okay, so the autofocus, I'm going to read this right out of the manual here. Th this is pretty good. So it has the eye detection, which is really good. So if you're wearing glasses or not, you know, or if you've got them halfway down your face, Eye detection autofocus is very important. So, no surprise here, as many of you are thinking, it can do Formula One cars, it can do rally cars, it can do motorcycles, but it goes on. It can do aircraft, it can do helicopters, it can do bullet trains, not just trains, but bullet trains, standard trains, steam locomotives, birds, dogs, cats, and UFOs. Okay, no, it doesn't say UFOs. I just put that in myself. <laughs> I was kind of laughing when Nikon did their Z9. It basically did everything. It did cars, it did motorcycles, it did pretty well planes, trains, and automobiles. And I joked about that at the time. It does everything. But the OM-1 goes a step further. It, they talk about the different types of trains, the bullet trains. It does aircraft and helicopters. It does everything but UFOs. And if it did UFOs, 
you'd probably see the Pentagon putting it on some of their aircraft for those, well, those UFO videos that they released back in 2017. So this is really, really incredible. It does have things like, it's like focus peaking. It does have focus indicators, metering systems. Uh, there's just so much information in here. I, I could just spend, you know, hours going over everything in here. And the electronic shutter, it's one eight thousandths of a second, but it goes to one thirty-two thousandths of a second if you're using the electronic shutter. Uh, uh, it's just incredible. It does time lapse. Again, it does slow motion as we talked about, but only in 1080. Unless, of course, you're shooting in 24, 25, or 30, then effectively you get a two times slow motion in 4K. But if you're shooting 4K, 60, or 50, you essentially don't get any slow motion. But again, if the detail there is there in 1080, and this is the thing, if you get the detail in 1080, shooting at 120 or 240 frames per second, in most cases, especially if you blur out the background, you're not going to really notice the difference between 1080 overlaid over a 4K video when you're showing your slow motion, if they do this right. So that's really, really exciting. Okay, let's go back to the notes that I wanted to talk about. And I always think of Jordan Drake whenever I see this, because he's always looking for this headphone jack and a mic jack, of course. The way I shoot, I don't use a headphone jack. I just don't need it. It's not the type of work that I'm doing. I'm shooting in the studio it's going to get in the way. I'm a one-person show. And when I'm out shooting run and gun stuff with my son, I've either got him mic'd up or I've got a shotgun mic or both. It doesn't really help me. And the way I've got the Tascam set up, which is what I'm using right here, I've got everything set up in it that I really don't have to worry about too much in post. So what else? Well, the camera can operate according to the specifications, normal operating range down to minus 10 Celsius. And it can be supplied with USB power as well. Now, in terms of the weight, it's 511 SEPA. That's without battery. With battery it's and memory card, it's 599 grams. So not super lightweight. But there is one thing that's a little disappointing. Now, again, it is a micro four-thirds camera. It is smaller. I would smack the R5 around a bit more for having a micro HDMI. The OM1 has a micro HDMI slot. And I, I wish they could have just pushed up and gone to at least a mini. I hate that micro. It's just prone to all sorts of problems. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. This is the only thing negative that I'm finding about this camera at this point. Now, I'm doing this live because I haven't had a chance to really go through all these specifications. I did it quickly. I wanted to validate the sources. And so... I'm going to go through and see if I miss anything else. Now, one thing I want to say about Ember Sky Media uh, tomorrow, or it's probably today already, it's probably Thursday, but on my 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time or New York Time live stream, I'm going to have Ember Sky Media on. And Ember Sky Media, what he likes to do, he does a lot of astro and uh, photography and that kind of stuff. So definitely tune up later today, or <laughs> tune up, tune in later today for that live show. It's late. I've been going all day. It's 11 o'clock at night, and I should be going to bed instead of doing a video. All right, so let me see what else I can find in the specifications here. And I'm going to show this on the screen so you guys can see it as well. Now, as far as white balance, it's got the standard stuff you'd expect to see in a camera. It's got seven presets. Uh, compensation for white balance, plus or minus seven steps. Color matrix, Adobe RGB or sRGB. I'm looking for something here that might be just something a little bit exciting. Uh, exposure bracketing, yeah, that's kind of expected. Uh, focus stacking, compatible lenses, so all that's listed in here as well. What else do we have? HDR mode. Uh, tripod high-res shot, yeah, no, let's skip that bulb. Live composite, interview mode, no, skip that. Video recording format, so I'm just, I don't see anything here that is outside of what I was just looking at. So I got 4K, yep, yeah, 60, 50 frames per second. Now, oh yes, one thing I wanted to mention, it doesn't do all I. I don't see any options for all I. It's basically long gop, which is an IPB format. So basically you've got the one frame, you have an interframe, and basically the intraframes are using some sort of magic math to build up the scene. So the nice advantage of this is that your file sizes are about a third smaller, although it can be a little harder for computers to edit. Where this falls apart is not in videos like this. I could shoot an IPB or long op, and it would look great. You wouldn't notice a difference. But if you're shooting a, shooting a snow scene or rain or raindrops hitting a puddle, this is where long op and IPB can cause a problem. So if you're shooting 4K or DCI 4K at 50 or 60 frames per second, that's an awful lot of data 
On the Canon R5, for example, when I'm shooting 8K over sample 4K, which is what I'm doing now, it's 420, it's 8-bit, and I'm doing about 470 megabits per second. So DCI 4K at 60 frames per second, it's less than half that, it's 202 megabits per second, which is still pretty decent. At 24, 25, and 30, it drops down to 102 megabits per second. And of course, once you start getting down into 1080, you're looking at uh, 52 megabits, uh, 27 megabits. And then when you get into the high res modes, let me see, did I miss something? No, that's still not 120. It's The slow motion is when you get down into 1080 and you're looking at up to 240 frames per second. Uh, so really, really incredible stuff there. Now let's see, time lapse, uh, five frames per second, 10, 15, 30 depending on the resolution. So you can do time-lapse in 4K, which is really nice. I started shooting time-lapse on the R5 in 8K, and wow, what a huge difference. What I like about shooting in 8K is that when I want to punch in, and I always do manual focus when I'm doing time-lapse, but when I punch in, wow, the detail. Um, you know, I can punch into one-fourth of the screen, and it's still gorgeous-looking 4K. So I'm glad that they give us time-lapse in 4K. It's just... I, d I wish I could see something that indicated that it did some sort of oversampling, but I don't see it. Image stabilization for video recording. Yeah, we got that covered. We talked about that. Focus peaking. Yes, I know. I'm doing the video now. Live output over HDMI, of course. Monitor mode, video mode, raw mode. Um, auto exposure lock. Sound recording. Wave format, 16-bit. Sample frequency, 48 kilohertz. No surprises there. Uh, just trying to see if I can find anything else in here that I missed that's a big deal. And I know I missed something because I realized, oh yes, I gotta bring this up and then I forgot again, and that's when I was talking about the video modes. So what have I forgotten to do there? Um, no, nope, covered off, HDMI connector, yeah, micro HDMI, wireless LAN Bluetooth, yeah, covered that. So USB 3.0, that's good to know, It'd be nice if it did 3.1, the battery, that's correct. So four-thirds four room has got that correct. It's a BLX-1 lithium-ion battery. Uh, you have supplied to USB power, yep. And of course, you can do sleep mode, one, three, five minutes off. I know, I'm looking for something that I've missed here. Oh yes, this is what I want to talk about. Good news, dual card slots. Now they are SD card slots, it is UHS-2. I know some channels are gonna say, well, why can't they do you know some of the more modern? For the video modes here, UHS-2 is more than capable enough. And yes, you can use UHS-1. They are backwards compatible. Uh, and humidity between 30 and 90%. Okay, that's interesting. When in operation, stored is different. Hmm, some cameras will let you go to 95%. Uh, anything else here that I've missed? Yeah, so now that's pretty well it. So I wanna go right back to the top, make sure I didn't miss anything. So the sensor size is 17.4 millimeters by 13 millimeters. It's got the micro four thirds lens mount. And yes, yeah, a four thirds stacked backside illuminated CMOS sensor. And the pixel size. So here's the number of effective pixels. And that's 20.4 20 megapixels. So that's really what we get to use. But it's actually a 22.9 megapixel sensor. That's the total number of pixels. Now they say approximate. So it's 22.9, that's a rounded up number. Uh, but yeah, oh, dust reduction, supersonic wave filter, image center, dust reduction system. Okay, so it shakes, big deal. Does it have something in front that shuts when we turn it off? That's the real thing. Okay, so I'm gonna close this down now because I've pretty well covered off everything I wanted to do. And hopefully with the screenshots over top when I'm talking about it, you can actually see more detail because it really is tough to memorize all this and get a video out, get it out there before anybody else, especially since I've been up since early this morning. I've already put out one video today, put out three yesterday. And uh, yeah, no, this is just uh, really, really exciting. So yes, it's a much improved autofocus system. And I think what we're seeing as a new bar set here is all the new cameras, regardless of their price point is, you know, eye autofocus, animal eye autofocus. Yeah, sure, that was so yesteryear. You better be able to do a whole lot more, more than that. You better be able to do vehicles of any type, helicopter, plane, vehicles, rally car, race cars, normal cars, um, 
you, you have to be able to do everything. And I think the only thing in here that I see as a potential threat to the GH6 is the autofocus system. If it does perform and the low light is there from a BSI stacked sensor, backside illuminated stacked sensor, then that could definitely hurt the GH6. But where the GH6 looks to be stronger is in the oversampled modes because we know it's going to have oversampled modes. Now this camera at 20.4 effective megapixels or 20.9 effective megapixels has the capacity of doing oversampled 4K. It's just the information that I have here doesn't indicate it. I didn't see it. I went through it multiple times looking for that. But this does look to be a very solid camera. It looks to be a very exciting camera. But the real question is, what do you think? Should I have gone to bed? Was this a complete waste of your time and mine? Or do you find value in this? Do you think this is an exciting camera? Whether you own a Sony, a Canon, a Nikon, does this new camera by Olympus, the OM-1, appeal to you? Does it interest you? Personally, I think this is a very, very good step forward. It doesn't wow me the way I was expecting them expecting based on what they told me. I, there isn't anything in here that goes, wow, that's amazing. But when I look at all the specifications and line them up, I go like, wow, this is a solid camera. But again, I would expect oversampled 4K for this to really wow me in video. The 240 frames per second, that is really nice. Uh, the exposure compensation, the frame rates and stills is very, very nice. These are punching well above that 2000 price point. But again, to give me really super high detailed 4K, that oversampled, I keep harping on it, it's probably because it's late and I'm tired, but it's the only thing on the video side that's kind of annoying me a little bit that there's no mention. But again, please, I'd like to caution you that while it looks like this is 100%, this is authentic, everything here, if for somebody to fake this would seem a little bit crazy. Uh, it mirrors exactly what Four Thirds Rumors have been telling us. It's 80% aligned with that. So I don't uh, doubt the authenticity of this. But still, if we wait until Tuesday, they do their presentation. Hopefully they don't just give us a 10 or 15 minute presentation, post it up there and then let us pre-order. I hope they do give us more. They really celebrate this. They show it off. They do what Nikon did with the Z9 and they give us a full day of celebrations. So we can actually see it. We can actually understand what these specifications mean, what they mean in that output because it's the capabilities, it's the end result that matters, not the specs at the back of a manual. One more thing, if you could do me a favor, please like and subscribe. Uh, when you like and subscribe, I take it as a virtual pat on the back and that's what gets me out of bed at 11 o'clock at night when I'm watching one of my favorite TV shows, Death in Paradise, episode five. I was really looking forward to that and then of course Ember Sky Media, like I said, he kept sending me tweet after tweet, Simon, you've seen this, right? You've seen this, right? Checked Four Thirds Rumors, checked Nikon Rumors, checked all the places I expected to find it. It wasn't there, so thank you very much for that. And of course, guys, if you ever come across stuff and you think I've already found it, well, that's not always the case, especially if it's late at night or early in the morning. Send me a tweet. The best way to get a hold of me, send me a tweet or email me. Uh, my Twitter is ofilmmaker, I believe, at ofilmmaker, and uh, you can send me information there, so I'd be happy to report on that. So I'm really, I've got some really good things for you guys coming up in the future, but this is really exciting. I've just got to figure out if I'm going to do a live broadcast of the event on February the 15th. Let me know if you think you'd find value in that. I might very well be doing that. I'm really curious. This camera does have me excited, although just a little bit disappointed. But still, I think it's, a, I think, uh, I think they're going to sell well. I, I, I think this looks like a really, really good um uh, foot forward. I think everybody at Olympus can, you know, keep their chins up high, hold their head up high. This is a very, very good effort from just the information that I've seen here. But that's it for now. It's after 11 now, and I've still got to go ahead and edit this and put this together. So it's probably going to be early morning Thursday, Eastern Standard Time by the time you're watching this. So please forgive me. I've been rambling on here a little bit. I understand that there might have been a few mistakes here. Please forgive me. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.